お前はもう死んでいる。何 ?Good news, everyone. I ordered myself a late Christmas present and it has finally arrived. Only half a year late. Fantastic. Anyway, here it is the SSD 1306 monochrome display. I got it from a few bucks from a Chinese trader on eBay, so I doubt I'll be able to identify the brand. However, I think this type of device is so common that they're pretty much identical no matter who makes them. Specifications wise, what we have is a pretty simple black and white 128x64 pixel matrix. That can be controlled over I2C. The commands are very low level, so anything fancy like text output or graphics primitives will require additional libraries. For this video, I'll stay away from all of that and focus on basic functionality. As usual, I will also put together a little user interface to cover the most important I2C commands. In the future, speed will be an issue, so I'll probably operate the device using some sort of microcontroller, but Since I want to keep it as simple as possible for now, I'll use my good old IO Warrior 40. I've been using it frequently in the past, so if you see something I don't cover in detail, I most likely explained it in a previous video. Check out the links in the description if you like. In a nutshell, the IO Warrior 40 is a generic USB to serial adapter and offers GPIO and I2C functionality. Slow as hell, but easy to use. It simply connects to the PC over USB. On the PC, I'll have the UI running, which will allow me to access the adapter's I2C messaging functions. The SSD 1306, taking the role of an I2C slave, is connected to the IO Warrior over the usual two wires, clock and data. And that is pretty much it. Now let's take a look at the datasheet and figure out how to communicate with the thing. First off, because the displays that I got are of questionable origin, I have no idea what the exact model is or who the manufacturer is. So, what I did is go on Google and pick the first datasheet that looked reasonable, and this is the one I got. The first thing of interest is on page 20, where it gives you an overview of the general communication structure. It starts off with the usual stuff the start condition and the address slash write byte. Interestingly, the suggested slave addresses. Match the ones on the displays, except it seems that they have been hardwired to hex 78 already instead of having some sort of pin selection. After that comes the control byte, and I have to admit I had to read it 20 times and I'm still not convinced it's accurately formulated. The control byte carries two bits of information followed by six zeros. What's clear is that the second bit determines whether the rest of the sequence is command or data. The purpose of the first bit is a little fuzzy to me. What seems to be going on is that it must be some sort of announcement whether the device should expect a single byte or multiple bytes. It shouldn't really be necessary because normally the device would read until it gets a stop condition anyway, but what the hell do I know? All that boils down to this every message, depending on type and length, starts with one of these sequences. The list of commands starts on page 28, and as you can see, there's a lot of them. I'll only explain the ones relevant for this video, so if you wish to take a look at the others, a link to the datasheet should be in the description somewhere. Here's a quick rundown Hex 81 is a double byte command and controls the contrast. Every value between 0 and 255 is accepted. Hex A4 and A5 control the forced activation of all pixels. This is not to be confused with the regular displays on or off setting. When the feature is enabled, All pixels are turned on regardless of the data in memory. For normal operation, this should be disabled. A6 and A7 control the mapping of zeros and ones in memory to black or white pixels. Normally, a zero in memory switches the pixel off. This is also the default. To switch the display on or off, the commands hex AE and AF are used. When switched on, the display will represent whatever is currently in memory. Unless all pixels are forced on by the A5 setting. The next command controls the writing mode. I'll only use one in this video, and that is horizontal addressing. Before you can write to the graphics memory, a subsection of the display has to be selected. Incoming bytes are written from left to right and then go to the next row. The double byte command hex2000 activates horizontal addressing. The next two commands define the portion of the display that I want to write to. The display is divided into 128 columns horizontally 
in eight rows vertically. The rows are also called pages and each page contains eight pixels. Both commands are triple byte commands and define the beginning and end in column and page dimension. The commands 21007F and 220007, for example, would make the entire display ready for writing. The last setting controls the charge pump, and despite the fact that it's really important, it's all the way down here. Naturally, I missed it the first time and freaked out for 10 minutes because nothing was working. Turns out the display needs more than supply voltage, so it's got a built in circuitry to elevate that to, I think, 7.5 volts. The pump is activated with a double byte command 8DAF. Here is a complete list of all the commands I'll be needing to implement the next step. If you scroll down to the very bottom of the datasheet, you'll find an initialization flowchart. It is recommended to run the whole thing once to initialize the display properly, but I find that it's enough to just run the previously outlined commands. The sequence looks something like this. The code for the message sending is pretty much identical to all the previous I2C projects. The only difference is that it's now loaded with SSD 1306 specific data instead of EEPROM or 80Tiny85 or whatever data was required at the time. To control the display, I want to have a simple UI that helps me select any rectangular area. Once the area is defined, it will be updated using one of four predefined drawing routines. One to clear the selected area to zero another one to set it to 1, one to clear everything except the one pixel border, and the last one to fill it with random data. The program will then update the active column and page intervals and start transmitting the modified pixel data. I'm also going to add some buttons to select the entire display, turn the display on or off, and invert the color mapping. The final setup is as easy as it gets. I got the IO Warrior 40 connected to the PC where the UI application is running already. Pins 6 and 7 on port 0 become the clock and data lines that are connected to their counterparts on the display. Ground and the 5 volt supply voltage are leached off of the USB connection. The initialization sequence for the display has been run already on startup so all that's left for me to do now is turn on the display. The device retains data for some time, so what you see initially is whatever has been written to the device previously. In order to get some data over to the device, I'll choose the drawing mode and make my selections. Theoretically, in this setup, updating the entire screen would take 1.4 seconds. However, because the code isn't optimized and I can only send 4 payload bytes per message, it takes around 2 seconds. But like I said earlier, this is just a quick test and in order to make some fluid animations happen, I'm gonna have to use a microcontroller anyway. So this is it for now, I'll try to make some of the code available either in the form of a link in the description or upon request. Alright, have a good one. See you later.